going to make red velvet cupcake swirls. Um, so these are red velvet cupcakes, however, with um, something extra added. Um, I've noticed that most red velvet cupcakes are served with a cream cheese frosting, but I've sort of made the cream cheese frosting part of the actual cake itself. Um, anyway, it'll all become self-explanatory. So it's very nice, so it's like two different types of cupcake mixed in the one, swirled. And it means then you don't have to put any icing or uh, fiddly stuff on the top afterwards. So we'll start, we'll start by uh, lining a tin with um, cupcake, cupcake cases. And it'd uh, be nice if I had red ones, but uh, I don't, so pink will have to do. So we preheat the oven to, what does it say here, 170. And I'm going to make the cream cheese bit first because it's easier, it's easy and quick. So for that I need 200 grams of cream cheese, which should be here, hello, and it is, um, one egg, okay, so any cream cheese will do, but you know, this is grand, as long as it's full fat, and uh, not the garlic and chive flavour, that wouldn't be so nice. So. This is already weighed, I know this is 200 grams, because it said it on the packet. There's one egg. I need 40 grams of castor sugar, which is here. And I need half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I'm just going to mix these four ingredients together. And so we'll call that mixed and we put this aside for the time being. Now it's time for the red velvety bit. I start by melting 110 grams of water. Okay, I'm going to melt that in the microwave. Um, just take a couple of minutes, maybe. Lovely. Still a few little bits there, but that'll. Uh, dissolve in a second. Okay, so I fired this in here. Then I need 170 grams of castor sugar. Now the reason red velvets are called red velvets is because the cocoa that is used in it used to be a much paler colour and um, when acid was added in the form of buttermilk or vinegar, we're using vinegar in this one, um, some kind of chemical reaction used to happen which turned the mix red but nowadays because the cocoa is so dark um, that doesn't happen anymore so red velvets are made re red by artificial means. Right, we mix these together. Next I add the vanilla extract. So that is a, a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Right, now that has to be mixed before I add the next thing. 40 grams of cocoa powder. Okay, I'm going to sieve it in because cocoa powder gets lumpy. Yeah, so the things have to be added in a very specific order because of the chemical reaction uh, that happens in this cake. Um, even though it doesn't go red anymore by itself. Back she goes. So after that comes the salt. Now, some salt. That's enough. Right, mix it again. Now for the food colouring. Now we can use this liquid stuff, um, about a tablespoon. So hopefully now this will provide our red colour. In she goes. God, I'm worried it's not enough. See, I worry about that all the time. I'm going to put a tiny bit more. Mix again. Right, and finally, the acid. In this case, cake which is provided by white wine vinegar. But we only need a tiny amount. I'm just taking it's a teaspoon, yeah. Mix again. Okay, meanwhile, I'm going to beat two eggs in a separate bowl. Well, it's not a bowl, it's a jug, but you're never mind. 
fire into your cocoa and melted butter and all the rest. And your food colouring and vinegar. Okay, that looks lovely. Now, see, and it looks sort of red. Can you see? It looks dark red. But um, definitely red. Now, finally, I am adding 160 grams of self-raising flour. And we fold the flour through. Now, people say that you should use a metal spoon for folding the flour through. But I don't. I use my purple spatula. Um, you know, the world hasn't ended. I'm going to divide this, four-fifths of it, between all of these. I'm going to leave a little bit for the end, you'll see why. Okay, right, so there's some left, as you can see, but I'll be coming back to it. Now, do you remember this stuff? From earlier, right. Now this comes into its own. I'm going to divide it between the 12 cupcakes here. So this is the cream cheese frosting that's built into the cake. If you're anyway sort of neurotic as I am, uh, you could drive yourself mad trying to make sure that it's all evenly done. Um, but it's impossible. So uh, don't even try. Celebrate the fact that they are all extremely uh, unevenly distributed. All right, so that's the end of that. Now, so we're back to what remains of this stuff. So we're going to distribute the remainder as evenly as we can without wrecking our heads. There's a really nice bit coming up. You'll really enjoy it. Bear with me. Lovely bit coming. Very enjoyable. This. See this? It says cake. If I turn around here, it says cake. See? Cake. And then if I turn around, it says cake. Right, this is the skewer uh, that you use to test your cake to see if it's done, you know, like when you take it out of the oven. But I'm using it to swirl. So I'm going to show you now. I'm mixing both the red velvety bit and the cream cheese bit. You see? Like this. I'm swirling. Do you see? Whirling. Very nice. Very enjoyable. Okay, I think they're all as swirled as they can be. Um, so now they go in the oven for 17 to 20 minutes. So say goodbye to them as they are now because the next time you see them they will be very different. See, don't they look magnificent? Very swirly. Um, so I leave them to cool down for a little while on the tray and then um, when I break them open um, I'll show you the redness inside. So this is one of the red velvet cupcakes. Um, it isn't very, very red, uh, but oftentimes it is. It's just the look of the draw, you know. Um, nice though. Extremely nice. Doesn't matter that it's not that red. Lovely.